Right, here we go. Let, now, give me a second just to get my act together. This is the first time I've used Blackboard, actually. I'm, I'm a Teams man myself, usually. Um, so let's share the screen. I'm going to share my entire screen. Um, so apologies for uh, those who are going to end up looking at themselves. But here's my presentation. Oh, hang on. There it is. Can like, and I've lost. I can't see the chat now either. So, can someone tell me verbally that they can see the screen? That would be really helpful. Yeah, can see that, Rob. wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, right. So, thank you, Chloe, for the introduction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just wait a second uh, before I introduce myself further, because this whole webinar, um, which we're, I'm really grateful to be able to, to have been asked to do today, is about kind of my strategies for enhancing um, student engagement. So, I'm gonna practice what I preach i know there's only a handful of us here today uh, i think that's just a good number actually um so i'm gonna i'm gonna force you as a captive audience to actually uh, engage with me so i'm gonna start by giving you that uh, qr code and um, this is a code for a poll everywhere so if you're not familiar with poll everywhere it's a bit of um, polling technology that um that is used just to to make very quick snap polls during um, teaching sessions. I use it a lot when I teach my students. Um, I typically do it at the either midway or at the end of every session. Um, so if you scan that QR code or you go to that, um, that URL, um, if you do not on your phone, click the skip for now button as well. So you don't have to put in any information. And, um, and what I'll do here is I will actually go and um, I'll show you what I can see. Uh, and so the purpose of this is um, is quite deliberate. So this is what I can see. So I've just started the presentation there. So you should be able to make a response. If you if you can't for whatever reason, just yell at me. Oh, there you are. We've got a smiley face. So um, I'm asking you how happy Friday. How was your week? Um, and I'm priming you here. So if I'm ever going to if I'm ever going to use one of these with my students, I would never jump into a poll cold if that makes sense okay so um the response rate i get from the students from polls are much much higher um if i've already primed them at the very start of the session and that's not in gen just in genuine I'm, I'm you know i do care about how your week was um i can see we're getting more positive than negative which is good um so what you've now got i hope and you should keep it there on your phones or whatever whichever tab you're in is you've got the poll over we're running we will be coming back to it, okay? Um, okay, right, so let me skip back over to my presentation. Thanks for your responses. I'm glad everyone's having a good Friday. Right, so, is that the right page? That's the one. Okay, so um, I thought about um, how I was gonna introduce myself here, and I'm sure many of you have been playing around with um, these, these um, amazing, uh, tools. I'm going to pick on ChatGPT here. Um, I've been playing around with a few others, Gemini recently as well. And these, uh, whether you like it or love it, are tools which are going to be increasingly with us and that we should all really um, be striving to figure out as quickly as possible because I guarantee our students are much further ahead of us when using these tools already. Um, so I asked it to help you visualize me and what I do. That's very vain, I know, but I, I fed it a prompt which said, create an image of a male university lecturer who teaches math, statistics, and coding. That's me uh, to large cohorts of first year undergraduates. So I'm in higher education, um, have a bit of experience in FE as well, but not for a long time. Uh, my interests include building digital tools, um, and I'll hopefully show you a couple of those today as well. Uh, and I'm always thinking about ways in which I can I can make better connections with my students, engage with them and get other people to do the same, but without really adding any additional or much burden to them during the teaching, because it's hard enough already, right? So I fed that, that prompt in, this is what I get. <laughs> um, and you can see there's a couple of problems with this image. Um, the first one obviously is I'm far more handsome than that rugged gentleman there. Um, the second issue is, and this is a real rabbit hole that we are not going to go down to today, but you can see um, it is assumed pretty much the entire classroom uh, must be white. Okay, so this is a huge caveat that I'm going to just lay down here. If ever you're using these technologies, they are in, they inherently assume all of the subconscious biases that have been um, 
or in some cases, unsubconscious, non-subconscious, conscious biases, um, that it is from all the information that it's sampling in order to generate that image, okay? So what I should be doing at this point is taking ChatGPT to task, telling it to give me a more representative picture. I didn't do that here because I wanted, I wanted to show you what it's most likely to chuck out on the first occasion, okay? So um, you can see here in this classroom, uh, I'm a very handsome, good-looking lecturer, uh, and uh, all of my students completely adore me by the looks of it, and they're all ready to engage with me, and they are listening to every word I say. Ha, is what I said to chat GPT. Uh, can you now actually show me the reality of teaching? Um, and I gave it a bit more information. I said in a large room with poor attendance, students are buried behind laptops and tablets, um, I probably look pretty disheveled and tired. It's been a long week. And also, um, as happened to me a couple of weeks ago, I was teaching in rooms where we'd had a lot of rain and the water was coming through the ceiling. We had buckets collecting water all over the place. It gave me a much, much better picture on the second go round. OK, um, so actually, this is a much better. I hope I don't look that unhappy when I'm teaching. Um, but this is a much, much more representative image of what it's like uh, to teach. Um, for me, at least these days, uh, and you can see here a couple of features. The first three rows are completely empty. Um, students um, aren't necessarily sat next to each other like in the previous image. They're, they are, you know, they're very much more isolated. Um, they're certainly buried behind laptops, and many of them aren't just looking at me at all. And they're all, you know, they go all the way up to the back. There's always one person sat right at the back. Okay, um, so that that brings me on really to the topic of this presentation. How on earth do we begin to engage our students when we are faced with teaching spaces that look like this, okay? Uh, and not just physical spaces as well. Um, there is kind of a virtual version of this, um, which is probably even more pronounced. In fact, I can go um, on you know, doing online teaching and not have a sing not see a single student, right? They will all turn their cameras off and they won't say anything. So I won't, it'll be me talking to the wall, okay? Um, right, so. The point of this webinar. Uh, so firstly, I'm going to acknowledge that um, it, it's increasingly difficult to engage our students in a digital world. And that is a complete, that's completely counterintuitive, isn't it? If you think about it. I mean, we're told all the time that all of these, this, you know, these digital education strategies are going to improve our engagement, our teaching, and it, it will, but there are some serious barriers to overcome before we can do that. Okay. And that, that really comes down to understanding exactly how the technologies are being used, should they be used in some cases, and access to technology. Not everyone can access things the same way as others. So what I'm going to do in this webinar, hopefully, is show you three practical ways of incorporating uh, digital engagement strategies into your teaching, if you're not doing it already. Um, and that has to be without breaking the budget. So everything I'm going to show you today um, is free and, and free or freely available. Um, and without melting your brains, it's got to be easy and straightforward. Otherwise, um, it's get, that's too much of a barrier. OK, uh, these are all legitimate strategies that I use in my teaching and I have found them to be effective. OK. Right. So three ways I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to show you a bit more poll everywhere. I'm going to put a twist on it. I'm going to show you how to generate in class quizzes from existing content using ChatGPT. OK, that'll be my first example. Uh, the second one, I'm going to show you how you can create and cultivate a really good feedback culture in your lessons. Um, and that is with a tool called Lickety Split. Think of it as like a trust pilot for education um, and very, very easy to use. And number three, I'm going to label my bonus mystery tools. And some of you may know what that is already because you've read the webinar blurb beforehand. <laughs> OK, um, right. So let's just jump straight into this. And any questions before I start, I always stop and ask. I can't see the chat, by the way. So if anyone can shout the that, questions in the chat, Rob. OK, right. I will keep going. <laughs> um, OK, so what I'm going to show you is an example here of how we can take a resource. In this case, it's going to be a YouTube video. I'm going to check it into ChatGPT. I'm going to I'm going to really be careful about the the prompts that I'm designing for ChatGPT. I'll give you those examples as well, so that I can generate an output that is perfectly formatted 
to upload to Poll Everywhere, um, which is the platform I primed you for earlier. Poll Everywhere, um, you can use for free. Um, you can have as many activities as you want. The limitation on the free version is that you can only receive 25 responses to an activity. So it's not great for large classroom teaching, um, but I find I get away with it in, in most cases. Um, okay, so let me show you what I'm gonna do. So I love YouTube um, and I use it in my, I use it to support my teaching all the time. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick on a particular uh, video here uh, from someone that I know and love. Oh, I've got my, my ad block on, hang on. Um, so if you've got a resource, that, oh, it's gonna make you watch a video. I don't need to see the video, that's fine. If you've got a video that you, you like and you use, um, then if you go to the, the more in the description and you come down here and you click on the show transcript button, this is on most videos in YouTube. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut all that out of there. Just control and see it. And then what I would do, I would open up ChatGPT. So I'm gonna use ChatGPT 3.5, um, which is free to use. It can be a bit slow sometimes because there's a lot of demand for it, uh, but it means you can use it. Um, now I'm, I haven't got time to do everything with ChatGPT today. So I'm gonna show you one I prepared earlier. Um, so if I click on this. So what I'm doing here is I'm copying that pa that transcript and I'm pasting it in to a chat GPT prompt. And I've shared this um, with you here. So you can see here, I've said, here's a transcript from YouTube on the normal distribution. So I'm, I typically teach maths and statistics. So if you've never done any, if you haven't done any maths statistics for years and years, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to quiz you too much on it. Um, and then this is just the transcript. Okay, there we go. Um, it's acknowledged that I've done it. It's given me a kind of, um, it's given me the indication that it's it's understood it, um, whatever that means for an artificial intelligent organism. And then I've fed it um, a CSV template from Poll Everywhere. Now you can get that in Poll Everywhere. Um, if whenever you're adding an activity, um, there's an option to to upload it from a spreadsheet or a CSV file. So what I've done is I've downloaded that template and I've literally cut and paste the template from that here. So it looks a bit like a, a bit of a jumble, but that's because it's from a spreadsheet. I've also been very careful to say that the three asterisks character here represents the cell in the spreadsheet that indicates the correct answer. And I've said, please, can you generate a five question MCQ, multiple choice quiz based on the transcript in the same form as the poll everywhere templates. Um, because I need to cut and paste it into an Excel file or a text file. And it's had a go at that and it hasn't done it. It hasn't got there. It's, it's given me the questions and the answers, which is great, but it, it hasn't done what I told it to do. It hasn't labeled the answers with the stars. Okay. Um, so it's given me five questions. So I've had a bit of argy bargy here. Can you put it in the correct format and label the correct answer with a triple star prefix. I also want five, so I, I didn't tell it, I forgot. I, I want five options. I wanna make it a bit more challenging. So I want five options instead of four on each of the questions. So it's given me the five um, options options this time, but it still hasn't labeled every single one of them with the correct answer. And also the format's not right. I can't get this into a spreadsheet format currently. Um, so I've got a bit shirty with it. And I, I've just said very bluntly, Format it as text for .c. Imagine me shouting that one at it, okay? And it's finally relented, and it's given me um, this, which I can actually cut and paste. Um, I, I, I can cut and paste that into, into a text file. In fact, that's what I did. I opened up Notepad, and I just cut and paste that, but I saved it as a .csv file. And what that means then is I can go to uh, Poll Everywhere, see if, I can, see if I can show you the page. Yeah. And if I, there it is, it's the upload button. And then I can take that text file and upload it here. And it will, it will format that and it will create my activities for me. And just to give you the example, I'm going to go back to my activities and I'm going to show you one of the questions uh, that it's done. Where is it? Normal distribution. Right, so I'm going to ask you all again 
to go back to your phones or your devices and you should now see um, a poll asking you what is a random variable so if you don't know what a random variable is that's fine click a just click a random one just, just so i know that you can see this okay okay I've, i can see i've got one response two responses so what I like to do during a session is there's an option at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can either show the responses live, and that's quite fun. But obviously, it generally, in, if it's if it's a knowledge based question, I'm not asking for an opinion or something like that. It it, it gives everyone the, the the right answer, or gives everyone the answers that like the most, which isn't necessarily the right answer. So I tend to hide this, and I give everyone a bit of time. I can see there's five responses now. So what I'll do then is I will actually share uh, the responses. Okay, all right, so um, there you go. There are your responses. So 60% of you said a variable that changes. Um, I think 20% said the outcome of the experiment. And then I can put you all out of your misery and I can show you the one that was correct. So obviously I'm gonna to totally forgive you if you've never done any maths for years and years for not knowing the answer to that question. Um, and there you go. And, and what I would do then, I would proceed usually to present the extra four questions that I would, were in ChatGPT. And that really would be either the midpoint or the end of one of my sessions. OK. Um, OK, so that was the first strategy. The benefits of this and the reason why I do it is because I, I often teach content which is kind of responsive. So I never really teach the same thing twice which means I don't have a, a consistent stock of MCQs to deliver during the lectures. I often do it on the fly in the run up to it. This whole process saves me a lot of time. Um, so um, you have to sense check it. So always look through your questions and make sure ChatGPT is giving you something sensible. But we, um, now I've got that chat in ChatGPT, I can throw any transcript in and it will give me the CSV file um, with a number of questions and it will just keep doing it. Um, it's pretty stable. Okay. So that was my first example. Thanks for um, interacting with that one. The second one, and uh, this is um, a microfeedback system. Okay, so this is what I call a high risk strategy. Okay, so um, if you are averse to honest, brutal feedback, this might not be for you. Personally, I think I've developed a tough skin over the years, and um, this is something which I like to do. And, and did you ever see those things on on YouTube or where they, where they read the bad comments or read the, read the tweets? I, I like to do that. That's fun. Okay, as long as it's not too offensive or too personal, I do like to address it. And um, you know, I never I never penalize anyone or any group of students for saying something which is probably quite honest, but just not in a nice way. So the idea here is to create a culture of, of, of a microfeedback cycle. I mean, my, microfeedback, what do I mean by that? I mean, it's happening on a session by session, session basis. This for me augments um, a, a kind of much more detailed end of semester um, evaluation where we, we ask students to provide feedback on a course, usually once it's finished. Absurdly, that's usually too late to do anything about it. Um, this system allows me to really get a, a dynamic feel for how the students are getting on um, and what they think, what they think of it. Uh, and usually it can help me identify problems and fix them on the fly um, as we're going along. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is use a tool called Liquidity Split. Um, this is a tool that I've developed um, specifically for this purpose. Um, the inspiration was uh, going to IKEA. Uh, I'm sure if you've, you've had the IKEA experience, um, and you've, especially if you've been with kids, they all want to push the happy, happy or sad faces. Um, there's always one of my kids who just decides to hammer the sad face. Um, but that, um, that, uh, that lick at scale at the end of your experience has really worked incredibly well for Ikea, I'm sure. But I've, I see it increasingly in shops. Um, the idea was to bring that to the classroom here. So this, this system will allow you to just create um, a survey. The survey is, is very simple. It's just five stars, okay? They can give a bit of extra, extra feedback. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do that now. How do I do that? What's the best way? I think if I go to the next page, there is, ah, yeah, another QR code. So I'm going to ask you to get your phones out one more time. 
and give that one a scan. And what you should see, and you'll have to yell at me if it's not working, but what you should see, I'm going to scan it just to make sure it's working as well, is a black screen with five stars on it. Okay. And then when you select one of the stars, so I'm asking you at that sort of midpoint in the webinar, how would you rate this webinar so far? That's my, um, my, my vanity and my narcissism kicking in as, again. Um, but give it, give, it a, give it a start. And what you'll, what you'll then get is a page which says thanks. And it prompts you for additional feedback. You don't have to give any additional feedback. Um, but if you want to leave a comment, you can. Right, so I, I would be doing this at the end of every um, session. And if I go back a slide, I also tend to carry an iPad around with me that I can just put on the desk. I can run that in a kind of continuous mode, just like at, I at IKEA. So as students are leaving room, they can just hit a star. And what this is doing, it's allowing me to build up a good picture of, of, of the kind of the satisfaction in the room. That is something you don't get from an end of semester or end of course evaluation, which are predominantly filled with quite negative comments of students complaining about a particular aspect. You don't really hear positive things, I, in my experience anyway. OK, so what I do then is before the next session, and I'll show you this now, is um, I will review the comments. In fact, I can show you one I made earlier. Right. Um, so this is what you would see. If you were looking at this and you've created your own survey, I can see a breakdown of my ratings from the students. And I can see if in this particular case, I've been, I've been generous in this test. I've given me an overly positive uh, review, a couple of negative ones as well. Um, and then I can see the comments. Right now, I strongly recommend you don't let them see the comments immediately. OK, um, and that is simply because there is an opportunity here for it to, if for some abuse, you know, you can, students can say whatever they want at that point, and it could potentially be offensive. They might be saying it about you, which I'm, you know, it's okay, I can deal. But you don't want other students seeing potentially negative comments about themselves um, or, or being able to comment about others, right? So what I do here is I usually give um, a good look at these comments. Obviously, that one is just defensive. There's no need for that. So I am going to delete that one, OK? Um, otherwise, I'm going to say, well, that's OK. That, that's pretty honest. Uh, these were all honest. And actually, all the others are pretty honest. Um, if at any point I think there's a comment that I want to keep, but I don't want anyone else to see. Um, for example, this, these are all genuine comments, by the way. I, I, you know, Even the first one, I have perceived all of those for real, um, in real examples. Um, I had this one the other day. I didn't know what clutch meant. So I had to go and look that up. And I didn't have the time. It, it's, a, it's a good thing, apparently. It's not a pejorative. Um, so I just blocked that out until I, <laughs> until I informed myself. Um, and then um, I can't show it to you now, but if you, um, if you were to go to the forward slash summary link, you would then be able to see this. And I would, I would do this. I would actually go through the comments with them at the start of the next session. And they can actually upvote or downvote vote each of these. And I encourage them to do that so I can see that if someone has said something, um, that their peers agree with it. This is a great strategy. It does two things. One, it tells my students that I'm listening to them and that I care. And two, it tells them that their peers are listening or posting and that they care as well. So it's, a, it's quite a good way for them to interact albeit anonymously with their peers and, the, and you know, generally if they can see that people are engaged and posting comments that is often a bit of a kick for them to do so in future as well so this I, i've by doing this at the start of my sessions um i've really seen um an increased engagement for the rest of the session i, I appreciate i'm running out of time here. how am i doing for time chloe i think i've gone over now You've got a minute left, but oh no, oh, that was awful. Right, so the the last thing, and <coughs> I hope I can get this done. Um, someone should have yelled at me. Sorry. So the last one, which is the the kind of bonus one, um, was um, that's why this logo has been here all along, and it's about um, gamifying attendance. So um, so I am the co-founder of a company called Fizzy New, which just specifically um, are interested in doing attendance right. Um, I'm so, as an educator, I'm so sick of never having an attendance system that is fit for purpose. This is why it matters to me. 
Um, attendance for me is actually the first opportunity for engagement. It shouldn't be a monotonous, laborious task for either the students or the staff. This is an opportunity for us to engage our students. And you can do that in a couple of different ways that the platform will do. Um, I'm going to whip through this, OK? Um, I wanted to tell you about a demo for the system that we have in uh, at the start of next month. So I will leave this in here. And I'll come back to it again, or I'll put it in the chat as well. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a full demo of the system uh, and how it over, overcomes a couple of really key problems. Um, three problems very quickly that I hate and I'm trying to really fix. Um, and you know, these, this is behavior that is perfectly normal. Right? I don't wanna chastise students for this. I would do it if I was a student, but all of these new technologies allow us to, to exhibit this behavior. One is the scan and run. And if you've got a system that I'll either allow them to log in and, and type, type a code in or to put in a uh, put their card up to a reader. The number of times I have a student who comes into the room, scans and then just leaves. It's quite dispir it's dispiriting for me. And it's also dispiriting for those who have actually attended. Um, so that's solved. In Busy New, we've got a really nice attendance audit system that identifies those who aren't really there. Um, what you do with that information is entirely up to you. Um, the second one is, oh, that's a, a quick screenshot. I'll skip that. Um, the second one is um, attendance systems based on attendance codes that get shared around almost instantaneously in a group chat so that people who aren't even in the room can log their attendance. That really bugs me. Um, it's, it's a very sophisticated, and it, it does prove to me that students do communicate with each other, which is quite positive. But I would really like um, a good overall picture of their attendance. So Fizzy Newt solves that because there is no attendance codes. Um, students self-report. Um, so you don't need to do anything. And you can audit if you want to as well. Uh, again, lots more information on how this works um, in detail in the demo. Um, and the last one, and this is me. Um, I've been here many, many times where they've all left. And I've gone, oh, let's take attendance. And it's too late. Um, I've forgotten to do it. Um, the majority of institutions, the, the onus is on the, the person teaching to take attendance. Um, Fitting you solves that problem. Um, it's based on a self-initiation. So the students initiate the sessions and log their attendance. It's quite a clever um, critical mass based um, tool. And even though you didn't initiate it, you can very rapidly go in and update a record or update the attendance so that you don't need to worry about ever forgetting the attendance again. Very quickly, I know I'm over. Um, just to bring it back to the theme of engagement, Fizzy New, so that, that, that microfeedback um, tool that I was um, showing you earlier, that is already embedded in Fizzy New. It comes as part of the attendance tracking, OK? Um, there's also additional engagement features on there um, that involve things, um, strategies to get the students to always keep coming back, okay? One is always having their personal data up front and showing um, where how they compare with the rest of their peers, okay? It's not it's anonymized, so they don't see their peers' scores, but they can see where they sit in the distribution of attendances. Uh, and also things like um, streaks. So if you've ever done any Duolingo, you know how addictive it is to get the streaks every day if you're learning a new language. So Fitting You has a very, very similar feature. Um, no expensive, unreliable tech required. It can has a, it has a, an absence reporting system. It has a couple of anti-cheat mechanisms in there we've discussed already. Um, and it's really easy for administrators, ridiculously easy. In fact, most of the, the taps you're going to use is going to be a two-touch um, function or operation. Um, OK, last thing I'm going to say here, thank you so much for listening to me over the time, is we, we're new. Uh, we're working really hard. Um, you know, this is coming from a place of real love and frustration for me. Um, so we are at the point where we are inviting um, institutions to partner with us to test this out for free. OK, so we want um, to see it being used. We want to um, work with you to set it up for small cohorts of students, typically less than 100. So if you've got a, a small class, you think I really want to try this with this uh, with these guys. Come and talk to me. Um, we will we will be with you every step of the way, and that will really help us inform. Um, and we 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 know the system works, and it is we're confident that it'll work. 
we want to test it now. We really want people to start using it. Um, so uh, tell us what you think and um, tell us what your students think if you're using it. We are um, on the way to get five partners before the new academic year. So if you want to be one of those, let me know and um, and we'll work together. So that that would be really exciting. OK, um, there's the the link for the demo again. And I think I'm done, Chloe. Um, any questions? 